Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe with the Fun Fan TV. Back at you, another video. Like the content this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content this channel, go ahead and subscribe, all right? Hey, look, man, uh, it's Victory Monday, but we got, well, we gotta be honest, this Monday feels a little different. It doesn't really feel like the Ravens won yesterday. Uh, feels like they did it just enough, right? And, um, you know, usually we get these kind of feelings like, well, nah, don't, don't feel like that, you know? Be happy that the Ravens won, right? Because, you know, when is it hard to come by in the NFL? Anybody can lose to anybody, and this is tough. And on top of that, it was an AFC North showdown. The Ravens are now 2-0 on the AFC North. It's things to be positive about, right? But you got to look at the W and look how it occurred and how it happened and what happened in that game to make you sit back and think, like, what's the most important way? So that, that, that kind of leads me to the question of the day. Is it about winning or is it about how you win? And it sounds like a simple question, right? You want to win. It's about the W at the end of the day, right? Um, you know, you, you come out here, you play 60 minutes to have the most points at the end of the game. You want that W, right? But I look at it kind of twofold. In a regular season, I think it's about how you win. Honestly, I do. And in the playoffs, it's about winning, 100%. That's it. Doesn't matter if it's ugly. Uh, doesn't matter if you throw three picks, two fumbles. If you get the W, you want to the next week, right? Because that's what it's about in the playoffs. But in the regular season... I think it's about how you win, especially when you're a team that you can see starting to build bad habits, right? So with the Ravens, I look at this team, okay? And why I say it's about how you win is because, you know, they've blown three fourth quarter leads. They were very close to doing it um, last game, right? You know, they're a missed field goal away from going in the over, well, blocked field goal from going in overtime. Justice Hill fumbling, just can't get out of their own way, right? You got that aspect of it. Then you got the aspect of, of where how the game is called. Lamar Jackson is an MVP quarterback and threw the ball 16 times yesterday. And his post um, his post game press conference, you know, the, the reporters are asking him about, well, you know, how is it? You know, you guys could get in rhythm today. He's like, well, I don't really think it's about rhythm. I mean, we only threw the ball 16 times. He said that multiple times. You know, it wasn't like he said it one off. You know, they kept, they were kind of poking at him about that. Um, hey, Lamar Jackson nine for 16. Nine for 16, under 10 completions, under 20 passing attempts, right? So then the Ravens snap count comes out today, as it always does in the day after the game. You got Pat Ricard on the field 88% of the time, all right? That's that's what it is. That's what it's going to be, Pat Ricard, right? But this is the issue right here. Devin DuVernay, 66. Rashad Bateman, 56. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, 23. Josh Oliver, 48. Isaiah Likely, plays 11%, which is only 7% of, sorry, plays 11% of the game, which is only seven snaps in the game. Let's talk about this, right? Pat Ricard, apparently he's on the field because the Ravens running backs are terrible at blocking. So essentially, Pat Ricard is no longer playing fullback. He's playing as an extra offensive lineman on the line. And you can see this, you know, he's lined up usually where a tight end would be or whatever, and or right on the, right attached to one of the tackles, whether it's left or right, and he's playing as an offensive lineman role. Okay, fine. If, you need to, if you, the Ravens think that's how you need to block to get Lamar Jackson pass protection, okay. Uh, for one, yesterday still didn't work. The Cleveland Browns still got a whole bunch of pressure sending four or five people, um, even with an extra blocker back there. Okay, so let's, let's talk about that. Secondly, if you're going to do this, that means you have to take a running back off the field. You have to because if you leave Patrick McCall on the field and you leave a running back on the field, that's one less wide receiver that gets to be on the field. That's one less receiving threat. Even if it's an Isaiah Likely who's heading to be a tight end, obviously, he can't be on the field in that, in that kind of scenario, right? The Ravens tried to pass the ball out of one wide receiver sets, three tight end sets, and simply it didn't work. It didn't work, right? Um, I look at Devin DuVernay. Devin DuVernay had a whole game plan schemed around him for the Bengals on Sunday Night Football a couple weeks ago. We're talking about in the back, we're talking about the jet sweeps, we're talking about multiple carries, five catches. Since then, he's been quiet. We haven't seen much from Devin DuVernay. We haven't seen much. If the, in the Bengals game, he's, he's one deep shot away for, from 100-plus yards and a touchdown, right? But now we come back to the Giants. He doesn't do much. He doesn't get targeted much. He's not involved in the game plan. We go to the Browns game. There is no concerted effort to get him the ball unless we're talking about a wide receiver screen at the end of the game, which is something that they could have done throughout the entire game to get his hands on the ball. They could. It was a point where Devin DuVernay, in his first two years, only pretty much ran jet, jet sweeps and stuff like that. Now that he's actually a part of this offense, 
Guess what he no longer does, apparently, is run jet sweeps. Why would you take that out of the offense when it's been such an important and, and a factor that's worked, right? Rashad Bateman playing 56%, I'm not really too mad about. I'm actually surprised he played that much just because he's coming off the foot injury, things like that. But what I will say about that is, is the simple fact that when Rashad Bateman um, was healthy, he was topping out around 66%, 60%. He was in that range. So he wasn't actually too far off from what, what he usually plays, which is a mistake. It's a mistake. I brought this up in a previous video. If the Philadelphia Eagles can find a way to play their two wide receivers 80 plus percent of the time, so can the Ravens. You're limiting what your quarterback can do. You're limiting what the attacking options are that are out there for him to, to even throw the ball to. Right? That leads me to the next one. Demarcus Robinson plays 23% of the snaps. Why was he brought here? He wasn't brought here for that. When the previous couple weeks, he was playing 70 plus percent of the snaps. And he wasn't, he's not even the best receiver who was available. It was Devin Duvernay was available, and he wasn't playing that much. It's inconsistencies in the game plan, right? So then John Harbaugh says um, last week before this game versus the Browns, right? During the, you know, you know, his meetings with the media and whatever, that the Giants were playing big personnel, so we had to match big personnel. That's not an offensive philosophy. A defense matches what you put out on the field. An offense is supposed to dictate what the defense does. Not allow the defense to dictate what the offense does to them. And that's the issue with the Ravens. Right? Because to me, that's a flat out lie. How can you say that oh, they were playing big personnel so we had to do the same? No, if they're playing big personnel, you get speed on the field. You get athleticism on the field. You get, cat you get playmakers on the field who can catch the ball. Now you make them change what they do instead of playing right into their hands. The Giants came out playing big personnel because that's what they wanted to do against you, right? The Browns are going to do the same thing, and they did. The Ravens ran the ball 40-plus times, passed the ball 16 times. This is why I say it's about how you win, because this team is, big, is building bad habits, obviously, in the fourth quarter. Slow starts from the passing game. A passing game has completely regressed. Your quarterback looks disinterested from what's going on, right? He He's a former MVP of this league. He wants to throw the ball more than 16 times in a game. Late in the second quarter, it was about six minutes left in the second quarter, Lamar Jackson had five passing attempts. Okay, five, right? That's unacceptable. How is this passing game supposed to get any rhythm? Right now, the regular season, right, it's all about, it, it is about getting dubs at the end of the day. You know, you got to admit that. Right. But the Ravens need to build good habits going into the playoffs. And right now they're building bad ones. And that's assuming that they got to make the playoffs. Right. Because, you know, you're a couple more blown leads away from being out from being out of it. Right now they're leaving the division to one on the division. So that's good. But in the regular season, I'm saying this is about how you win because you want to build the right habits. You want to build the right character. Right. You want to face adversity and overcome it. So in the playoffs, when it gets ugly, you know how to win. All right. I look at Oliver, right? And it's, and it's unfair to Josh Oliver because he's playing quite well, all right? But he kind of shows that, you know, when he needed to make a tough catch in the end zone, he dropped it. It's a tough catch. The DB's all over him. But, you know, you want to make that two hands on the ball. You want to see a big bite tight end come down with that, all right? That leads me to Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely was drafted here to be a part of this great Roman scheme and catch passes. You're going to say he's a, he's a negative blocker. Isn't that why Ricard's in the game or as an extra offensive lineman on, on, on the line of scrimmage? So that he can take up the blocking responsibility and Isaiah like can go out there and run routes? You know what I mean? So the philosophy doesn't match up with what you're saying. Okay? The Ravens too many times, right? Um, they're leaving your quarterback in situations where it's easy to defend him. If it's one wide receiver on the field and three tight ends, yeah, Mark Andrews is a threat for sure. But now I can just double Mark Andrews. I can put I can put extra attention to that one wide receiver and say, hey, Josh Oliver, go out there and beat me. That's what they're leaving. That's what they're leaving the, the, the Lamar Jackson with right now. That's why for me, it's about how you win in the regular season. In the playoffs, if you gotta win ugly, do what you gotta do. But in the regular season, you gotta build habits and build confidence in yourself going into the playoffs. And right now, I don't have any confidence in this Ravens team going into the into the dance. I don't. The defense is playing well. The offense goes down. The offense is playing well. The defense goes down. They can't get in sync. 
So for the Ravens, they must figure out a way to win and have this offense step into the 21st century. Honestly, okay? And if that means like going Greg Roman, that's what you have to do, or Greg Roman has to just change philosophies, which is what is more likely to happen for him to be let go, for him to change philosophies. Because right now, going into the playoffs, playing that kind of game, you're not going to win. And that's what it's about, winning in the playoffs. And right now, the Ravens don't feel like they're booked to do that. This victory Monday felt, it didn't feel like that. It felt like it left the Ravens fans doing a lot of reflecting about what this team truly is and how all the talent on this team is being wasted by poor personnel calls, by changing too much, by not getting your playmakers involved, not getting them the ball. Why is Devin Duvernay not touching the ball minimum eight times right now? These are, these are the kind of questions the Ravens have to answer, and they got to answer it on a short week going into Tampa Bay. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so listen, we're gonna, I'm going to drop the game preview probably uh, on a Wednesday for the Tampa Bay game. But let me, let me know what you guys think about this topic. In the regular season versus the playoffs, or just in general, how, tell me how you feel. Is it about how you win, or is it just flat out get the W is about winning? Uh, let me know. We'll discuss about it uh, in the comments, man. It's your boy, Gary Bruce. Just another fan TV. I'm out.